What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuild. Today we're going to be working on my 2004-5 Cadillac DeVille stretch limousine. It's basically a funeral car that I got for very cheap, like 2000 bucks, something like that, 2200, 23, whatever. It was really cheap. It's only got 29,000 miles on the odometer. I've been driving this car. In fact, I've put close to a thousand miles on it myself. Monkey Wrench Mike came down. He picked it up. He drove it to Tulsa. He used it. He brought it back from Tulsa. And now it's here on the lift. It's got a few things that we need to take care of in this video. It shouldn't be too difficult. And then I think after that, we're going to get it ready to sell. So here it is, my very dirty and uh, very low mileage Cadillac DeVille limousine. We have a driver's side window that likes to fall down due to a failed regulator. I'm gonna wanna take care of that in this video. We have, what else is there? The door panel, if I remember right, something was going on with the door panel. Actually, maybe there's nothing wrong with the door panel. I don't see anything wrong with this. Oh yeah, I had to tape it on. That's right, I forgot all about that. Hopefully we don't get a bunch of sticky residue. <laughs> We're gonna have to get all that off. That's right, the door panel is broken. That's that's right. We have a knee bolster um, cover here that is missing. It's broken as well. So I bought the knee bolster piece. I bought a door panel. I bought a window regulator and the blend door um, motor for the driver's side has failed. So uh, unfortunately, this car looks like it was retired from service because it had air conditioning problems. Now, AC in the whole car works phenomenal it is wonderful except on the driver's side that vent and that vent over there no they don't work quite right when i hooked my scanner up to this car what i found is that when the computer was calling for zero on the blend door for the driver's side it was actually staying at about five percent so zero is all the way cold and for whatever reason it hangs at about five percent so i bought the uh the blend door actuator blend door motor for this as well. The tires are in great shape. The car looks pretty dang good considering its age. It runs great as well. Headliner is in really good shape. The whole car, it's, it's a really, really good, comfortable car. Now, I don't know who my target audience is for this vehicle. I'm not sure that this is gonna be an easy one to sell. Number one, it's a North Star, and everybody's afraid of a North Star. However, what a lot of people don't know is that the North Star had a redesign by the time... Oh, wow, I need to... I need to clean under here, guys. Good Lord. We'll, we'll definitely clean this up before it goes up for sale. That is filthy. I live down a dirt road, and really, I have put close to a 1,000 miles on this car. I was daily driving this thing ever. I love driving this car. However, it's time, as always, to make room. There's nothing really more that this car is going to need from us, so I decided this is on the chopping block um, to sell. So there's your North Star V8, and this engine cover, this is the redesigned engine cover, okay? If, if your North Star has this cover, then your car has the redesigned head bolts. It's not the one that's prone to blowing head gaskets, which really it's not blowing head gaskets that's the problem. It's the bolts stretching or corroding and pulling out of the cylinder head. Typically in the rear, usually starts on the passenger side and then you get you know, coolant and oil mixing or you'll get antifreeze pouring out of your cylinder head literally directly onto the ground. This car hasn't lost a drop of coolant in the almost thousand miles that I've driven it. So we're gonna get to work on that. Um, also, we've got this one. This is going on the chopping block soon. Some of you are going to be really upset about this, but uh, no, guys, no. After the Monte Carlo SS, I do not want to put into this car what it needs. This car needs far more than the Monte Carlo SS did. Um, it needs brake work. It needs, if I remember right, front CV axles. The boots are ripped, so it's going to need CV axles. Um, it needs tires. I've got all the hubcaps. I did fix the convertible roof, but I still have to put the interior back together. It's 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 not done. We're going to come back to this in another video and try to put the hubcaps back on it, clean it up, and, uh, and basically finish this to put it up for auction and sell it. This one's going to be listed at Copart. 
And we're gonna try to take it on a little drive because we have yet to really go too far in this car. It's been kind of sketchy. So I think I've got this thing to the point now where we can actually take it for a ride. Next, this is one I'm really debating on, my Kawasaki Voyager. Um, I don't know, I got such a good deal on it, 600 bucks, and I cleaned it up, and she cleaned up beautiful, guys. This thing runs and rides perfectly. In fact, I haven't started it in a couple days, so I wanna, I wanna show you guys something, assuming I can find the key for it which, there we go. All right, check this out. It is cold in here. In fact, you can see the temperature, considering how hot it is anyway. It is about 75 degrees, and it's 100 degrees outside. So it is relatively cool in this building. And I'm gonna show you that I haven't started it, all right? I don't know where the, there's the mufflers, right there, exhaust, look at this. Right there, nope, I can put my hands on it, grab it ice cold all right and hold on i'll do you one better i'll do you one better let's pull out the infrared thermometer let's see what temperature the engine is 70 70 degrees exhaust 70 degrees okay she is ice cold I'm doing this for a reason. I know it seems excessive, but there's people that'll jump in the comment section and say, oh, you did this or that to try to fool us. I don't have time for that, guys. I, I'm not into all that trickery. Oh, whoa, whoa. Let's turn that radio on. Yeah, I also got the radio working. <laughs> I, got the, I got the radio working, and I've really enjoyed the radio. I also filled it up with a full tank of fresh fuel. All right, so you turn the key on, and then you turn this to run, and then... Listen to that. And the choke's not even on, guys. If I were to turn the choke on just to hear, I forgot to turn the choke on. There we go. There we go. We got the choke on just a little bit. Take a look at this. And she's cold. Guys, she's cold. Now, I'm showing you this because I am on the fence about selling it. Um, hell, I just got the thing running. I just rode it for the first time, and I really like it. But it's so big and so heavy, it's just not my, it's not my style of bike. It really isn't. So part of me wants to keep it because how often do you come across a great deal like this? It still has the uh, all the original books. It has... The maintenance records, uh, I mean, this, this thing literally has everything. It runs out and rides absolutely great. And now the radio works. So I'm gonna turn it off so I don't die of carbon monoxide poisoning. Oh, you know what I did do? I put a brand new battery in it. I did, I put a brand new battery in it and uh, it's been fine ever since. Just needed a battery probably from sitting for so long. So, yeah, I'm trying to decide whether to sell it or not. For $600, it's hard to let go of because I doubt I'm going to find another deal this good again. But at the same time, this makes my third motorcycle. And it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. I don't really care for this style of bike. I'm more of a small bike kind of guy. I like the things you can kind of whip around and maneuver. This one is not that. It's a big cruiser of a bike, guys. So I'm thinking about throwing that up for auction at Copart as well so drop your comment below do me a favor tell me what you think should i sell this or not the cadillac that one is absolutely going and this one too is absolutely going as well now why don't we see if we can't get some work done why don't we start by ripping off all of this gorilla tape um like i said i hope this didn't leave too much of a residue it didn't that's that's not that's not too bad and i guess we can go ahead and pull it that, did, that worked out all right. That's not too bad. Where's some more right here? Um, this Gorilla Tape is good stuff, man. It is really, really good stuff. Yeah, we left some residue. That's all right. We can clean all that off. I probably got some goof off or something. I know I put some down here too. There we go. Cut that off as well. And yeah, over here for sure. Get in there and pull this off. This door panel is probably going to want to just fall off of here um i keep thinking we got to take this lock off you gotta yeah there's a clip right in here 
you got to pop this out and then this pops off and then I think we got to pop this out and then I think back here we pop this out as well all right so to get this out you just take your little pick kind of get in there and come on come on yeah you get what I'm trying to do here so once you get this piece pulled out like that yeah it just pops off so you can throw it in the floorboard where you won't forget about it then open the door handle and there's a cover in here that you're going to need to pry out with your little pick you can kind of see where it separates right there stick your pick in there and pop that out just like like this there we go throw that on the floor so you don't lose it and there's a phillips screw hiding in there so i got me a phillips screwdriver with a magnetic tip just get on there and pull that sucker out and then i think well the door panel is already trying to fall that's that's why i had to buy a new door panel and unfortunately the new door panel does not exactly match this car um just one of those things man i did the best i could do with what i had at hand we may need a screwdriver for this to get in here we don't have to be too careful there we go we don't have to be too careful with this door panel because we're not reusing it obviously there's a clip be careful not to break your uh your main what do you call this you get what i'm saying don't break this part taking this apart all right i think at this point it just, yeah 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 now again be careful we're not done yet golly there's a wire harness right here all right you got to push this in and take this connector off once you've done that now you can sit this to the side and the new door panel comes with that connector okay so no worries about that either next we got to get in here and take this piece off so we can get to the regulator and i really wish i'd watched some videos about this first but i didn't we do have some door clips we're going to need to take these out because these are going to be uh, extras i think the the new door panel has all these and to get i just can't remember how this goes i think to get these out you push these clips in the middle come on yeah you push those in just like this right in the center see that right in the middle like that boom they go in just like that and then yeah but don't lose them and then remember when you go to put this back on you've got to push them back out okay you don't want them to just sit uh recessed like that you got to actually push them back out so they're flush don't lose them you're going to need them just do that all the way around this door then you can take off this special little cover now next we're going to have these little clips right here and these go right here you got two of them all right these just pop out so no big deal having one of these little uh trim tools is going to go a long way just kind of stick it up under there and, and pop it out just like that throw it in a safe place and with all of that done aside from all these wires i think oh, i forgot one there's one hiding look at that right there so in case you're doing this yourself well now you know you don't have to go through what i went through just get down in there push it use your trim tool and okay it's going to try to to fall that's fine we'll uh we'll gently pull it out and we now have good access to our window motor and regulator assembly now i've already been in here this window falls on its own all right so because i was driving the car daily i stuck some wash rags down in there some foam something i don't remember what it was but i stuck it in there so that when the window falls it can't fall all the way down and shatter the glass so next to get your regulator assembly which sits right here you've got a nut here looks like a nut here a nut here everywhere a nut nut um is that it just one two three that's all i see and then we're going to transfer this motor over to the new one let's go take a look at the new assembly this will help us figure out our uh, our mounting points as well um okay i hope i'm wrong but this sure doesn't look the same to me guys it is it is okay <laughs> had me worried there for a minute so it looks like this goes here and here looks like it comes with some new nuts that bolts somewhere right there maybe right there 
I don't know. And then the motor, oh, it goes this way. Yeah, 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 it goes this way. Okay, 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 I see. I see, and then the motor, well, I sure hope I see. Something about this just ain't looking right, guys. I'm getting, uh, I'm getting a little concerned. All right, for me, it's been a few days. The grandkids came over and I've been gone. So we're coming right back and picking up where we left off. Like I said before, it looks like a bunch of tins. I think 10 there, 10 there, 10 there. And then for the window, you gotta take the window off of the regulator. You're gonna have a 10 over here. And then thankfully this window slides down, right? And once you get it to a certain point right there, you can see we have the other 10 right there as well. So we're going to take all these bolts off. We're going to take this pigtail off, which I assume just push in and it's got a little, it's got a little push tab back there, I guess. I don't know. There we go. Almost. Come on. Well, it's easier when you got two hands, but you get the idea. Push in the, uh, where's that little clip? Right there. Push in that clip, pull this out, and then hopefully we can figure out how to get this out of here. All right, this is now disconnected from the regulator. You should really put a piece of tape over to hold this thing on, um, but the window seems to fit pretty snug, so I'm gonna take my chances and hope that nothing goes wrong. We got the bolts out from here, here, and down here. So we should just be able to, come on, there we go. So now she's loose. Now it's just a matter of figuring out how exactly to get this out. And that could be, uh, could be a little tricky, but I think, there we go. You put it in upside down. <sighs> we'll put it in upside down like this. And then once it's in, we can turn it back around. But now we got to figure out how to get this motor out. Oh, okay. Looks like we got just a few uh, Torx bolts right there. As you can see, looks like three of them. And we should be able to transfer the motor to the new regulator assembly. So after comparing and making sure that everything looks like it fits right, we took out one, two, three T30s and the motor should just slide right on over to this one. Um, it's already got plenty of grease on it. We know the motor works fine, so shouldn't be any issues with that at all. Just kind of stick it down in there, I guess. Make sure it finds itself a, a happy little home and get all your bolts lined up. Again, easier when you've got more than one hand. All right, we got the new motor installed. Easy enough. It's bolted in. Now I gotta remember how I took it out because I said we're gonna put it in upside down. So I think that means it's gonna go in something like this. Uh, just kind of fish it in. Yeah, something. There we go. Something like that. Grab it from this side and kind of, there we go, finagle it around. Once it's in there, you're good to go, man. You just gotta turn the sucker around, lift it up, and bolt it. Again, easier when you have two hands available, but, well, you get the point. Put it straight up and down, put your bolts back in, plug it in, and you should be Good to go. So it takes a little bit of finagling to get this done. You're gonna have to move the regulator up and down, which means you're gonna have to install your door panel and your switch temporarily. Make sure that you've got your new, if you got new ones, mine came with new ones, but if you've got this new rubber, go ahead and use it. Clips on the back side, just like this. And then this lip on the front side actually clips to the front side of this right here. So make sure it overlaps that as well. Kind of finagle the window around and uh, you'll get it. Again, one-handed, not so easy, but we'll get this done. And obviously the window regulator is working because the window is partially down. So, so far so good, not that difficult. And now we'll do a full up and down just to make sure everything works. Let's see how it does. Express down works great. And back up again, express up. Look at that, works like a charm. So as always, installation is in reverse of removal and uh, we've got the panel all put back together. Everything looks happy. The only downside to this is the door panel just doesn't match, man. The, uh, it's just, it's not even close. This is a tan with kind of a, I don't know. Obviously this is gray, 
dark gray on light gray. This is like dark tan on light tan. So the door panel, is, it's not gonna match the rest of the car, but it is what it is, man. This is what I got. Now, there is a connection for heated seats, air conditioned seats. I don't, I don't think any of that's gonna work, but as long as the windows and the door locks and the mirror switch works, maybe we'll even have memory because this one did not have a memory seat. I don't know if that'll work either, but this door panel, is in really good condition. All the little pegs are there that are supposed to plug in. This wire here is supposed to be attached to the door, and it is. On this one, everything just kind of falls out. It's really broken. I am going to throw this in the trunk, though, guys. I'll throw this in the trunk just so the door panel is there. Obviously, the whole point of putting this car back together is to sell it. I drove it. I don't need it. I don't drive it anymore. This one and this one. Like, these need to get up for sale at Copart quickly. So we're doing the best we can with the parts that we have. And just like that, we have a door panel. As I suspected, uh, memory seats don't work. This car wasn't equipped with it, so I, I did. I hoped, but I didn't expect. And obviously, we have no heated and cooled seats in here either. But the windows work like they're supposed to. Everything seems to be happy, except for the door lock. Come on, man. Okay. Mirrors? Yes, right? Also works. There it is. No? The door lock. I swear this worked. Okay. You know what? Anyway, it's fine. I'm done. The door panel is on. The door works like it's supposed to. The window works like it's supposed to. It's a hell of an improvement from where we was. Uh, that was the hardest thing I really needed to do. Next, before I forget, we will throw the door panel in the trunk, just in case somebody has a use or a need for this uh, when they get the car. Oh, I forgot I've got exhaust components back here too. We've got a, yeah, pipe clamps. I'm going to leave all that back there. Honestly, I have no need for it. I, I don't want it. I might even throw, we'll go ahead and throw the old regulator in here too, just for good measure. Any old parts that I have, we can throw in this car. All right, there we go. And I think we're almost done guys. This piece right here, this simply clips on down here. This is super easy. Um, I'm not going to put this on yet because I got to do the blend door. But this piece actually, and I got the right color, see? <laughs> These parts, by the way, were not cheap. This slides up in here and it just clips in place. And then there's like two, maybe? No, there's not even any screws. It literally just clips into place. So next I got to get to the blend door actuator for the driver's side. It is, well, it's somewhere up there. I don't know exactly where it is. I'll get a light. We'll figure it out. We'll get that replaced. And with any luck, this car will be done other than taking it out and giving it a little bit of a bath, washing it off. It's almost finished, guys. Almost ready to go down the road. And time for the blend door, which is really easy to get to on the driver's side. Let's see if we can get you guys up just a hair. It actually sits, well up under here and right there. See what that wire harness is right there? That's it. There are only a couple of teeny tiny little bolts that hold it in. Take those bolts out and make sure the power's off, air conditioning, all that stuff is off. You should be able to grab this and just kind of, there you go, pull it out of there. There it is. And here is the new one. They should look very similar, actually. I think this goes this way. There we go. This is how they look. They look like they match. Bolt holes match. Seems like we should be able to just uh, plug this thing in and be done with it. Uh, if you notice, this one, this notch, I don't know what you can see, but it's got a notch in it. You see how it's pointing way outside? There's little notches up here. It's like hot, cold, and medium. Okay, that little notch is way outside of where it's supposed to be. If you look at this one, you can see the notch that's in this center piece right here actually is already on probably cold. Matches right up to cold, and that's the problem. This one has like skipped a tooth or something. You know what I mean? It is way outside of where it's supposed to be. So supposedly we throw this in here and throw, looks like three little bolts into it. 
and plug it back in, we should have ice cold air conditioning on the driver's side. Who would have thought? The car was retired because it kept going back to the dealership for service for air conditioning problems. All along, it could have simply been this silly little blender that was like 30 bucks on Rock Auto. I believe this is the original one. I don't think this has been replaced. So let's swap it out, see if it works. Moment of truth, because if we've got the air conditioning fixed on the driver's side, we're pretty well done with this car. Oh, air conditioning, max. Let's turn these on. And let's find out if we've got ice cold AC. Let's give it a minute. We have the AC on, AC off, AC on, recirculate. Come on, do it to it, man. They feel the same so far. Here we go, here we go. Yes, <laughs> we, we got cold air. It doesn't seem like doesn't seem like that big of an accomplishment, does it? Uh, believe me, when you're out here driving around in this car, there's a couple things. It's 100 degrees out, right? It's super hot. That AC, that's a huge, huge difference, man. Uh, that's absolutely necessary. And then, of course, when you go through a drive through or something, I mean, you want to be able to roll your window down. It's, it's kind of important, you know, being able to roll your window down and up. And not having the window fall down on you when you're driving. Yeah, we got nice nice cold air now guys i'm gonna call that a success which means now we can install this and we can be done with this car all right well there she is it's time to roll her out we got the window fixed i even cleaned all the greebies off of it we got the air conditioning fixed we got this beautiful panel back on the bottom here we got all the extra parts thrown in the garage air conditioning is doing exactly what it's supposed to do Garage doors opening up. This car has been on my lift for a while, man. I kind of, I got sidetracked with some other stuff and, well, unfortunately, you know how it goes. I, I need to give this one a, a pretty good bath, aside from just giving it a good wash under the hood and everything. Oh, she's filthy. Wow, it looks way worse out here. Way, it looks, it looks way worse out here. My goodness. Wow, I, I, did, <laughs> I knew it was dirty. I didn't know it was that dirty. All right, not to worry. I'm not selling it yet, guys. It's, it's coming soon, but not yet. I will have a video for you when this car is ready to go up for sale. Like I said, first I gotta clean it up. I'm not really sure if I got time to clean this thing today. Uh, I got some new projects that have arrived and another one that's supposed to be here probably Oh, hell, I better park this over here. Probably any minute, uh, you might see a couple of my new cars. Uh, yeah, sitting right there. So, stay tuned. There is definitely a lot more to come. We got a lot more cars coming to the channel. I'm so glad that AC works better now. That is a, that is a game changer right there, man. That air was just warm. It sucked. It was nowhere near as cold as it should be, and now it feels great. So, whoo, you step outside though, a thousand degrees, man, a thousand degrees. Guys, take a look how filthy this thing is. It is absolutely uh, hideous. This car right here, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know, you guys can tell me what you think. That wheel looks like it's got some camber issues, doesn't it? Kinda, ugh, don't know what's going on there. How about a fire car, huh? Yep, a, uh, a burn victim. This is a 1959 Rambler, and the engine, that's over a 1,000 horsepower right there, guys. I'm not joking. I'm not playing. I've already found the owner and talked to him. And then we got my, uh, my new-to-me C5 Corvette. Yeah, I don't know. Um, this is another one I just... This is one I saw it at the auction yard. I didn't check it out. I looked at it real quick. And I didn't start it or anything. I threw a bit on it, forgot about it, and well, here it is. So we'll uh, we'll be checking in on this one pretty soon as well. So like I said, more projects coming in. There is yet another one coming to the channel, man. Uh, updates on the Monte Carlo SS coming really soon. The Viper is sitting right here looking pretty. It's been sitting out here for days. 
That's it guys, I think we're done with this video. So do me a favor, if you enjoyed the content, hit the thumbs up button and let me know. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already subscribed. And until next time, stay safe out there everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.